Hey folks, the Scottish Reviewer has returned. You know, it's homecoming weekend here at BGSU, and when I think of homecoming, I think of marching bands. And when I think of marching bands, I think of the old style military band. And when I think of the old style military bands, I think of Professor Harold Hill, the protagonist of the 1957 Tony Award winning musical, The Music Man. How's that for a segue? Not this time, Scotty. The Music Man might be a stage musical, but it's not a musical you've been in. It is, however, one of my favorite movies of all time. The success of the stage musical was such that in 1962 they made it into a very successful movie starring Robert Preston reprising his role as Professor Harold Hill, the traveling salesman and con man who attempts to swindle the people of River City, Iowa out of their money with the promise of creating a boys band. Also reprising their roles from the stage music- what? Hey, 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 what are you- Hey, thank can't. you. Isn't he great? He won't be back. The show was an immediate success on Broadway, winning the 1957 Tony Award for Best Musical, even beating out the critically acclaimed West Side Story. And it's easy to see why. It's an energetic musical with a stellar cast, with great comic timing, and a great sense of that small town folksiness. The music was similarly wonderful, using- What the- Hey, what are you- Clever uh, lyrics and energetic melody- Okay, 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 hold, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What do, you, what do you say we just do this together, Hatter? I mean, come on, everybody's been clamoring for a comparison review of stage and screen production, so, so how about it? Well, I suppose this is... Do you mind? Oh, oh, sorry. I suppose this is as good a time as any to introduce a new series of comparative reviews called From Stage to Screen. Now, unlike books versus movies reviews, we're not going to be trying to figure out which version of the story is better. Instead, we're going to be looking at how well the movie adapted the stage version of this story to screen. The stage version might still be better, but if the movie is still pretty good, it still gets a passing grade. We'll be grading the movie on four different categories, and for each of those categories, the movie will either get one of three passing grades or a failing grade. And based on those scores, we will then give the movie a final score on how well it adapted the stage production based on this grading scale, which I took from some children's fantasy series. I, I, I don't remember which one. It might have been His Dark Materials. So without further ado, let's take a look at today's subject, The Music Man. Our first category deals with the specific performance of this particular cast and director. Despite the fact that this is a movie, this is still just another performance of this musical, and it's important to look at it as such. And in general, I can't think of much bad to say about this cast. They perform the parts well and accomplish what needs to be accomplished. Reprising his role as Professor Harold Hill from the Broadway version is none other than Robert Preston. And let's face it, no one else could have played this part. Robert Preston is Harold Hill. Apparently, even Cary Grant turned down the role because he said that nobody else but Preston could play it. Of course, Preston would have been a better choice than a certain actor from a certain 2003 remake that, well, we shan't talk about here. Someday, though. Also reprising their roles from Broadway are Pert Kelton as Mrs. Peru and the Buffalo Bills as the school board turned barbershop quartet. In both cases, it's easy to see why they retained the actors. The Buffalo Bills sound great, and Kelton plays a wonderfully loving and occasionally sassy mother to Marion and Winthrop. The other actors are new to the movie, but like I said before, there's not a bum in the lot. Shirley Jones, Buddy Hackett, Hermione Gingold, Paul Ford. These actors are simultaneously hilarious and put a lot into their characters, really giving us the sense of this small, stubborn town that refuses to budge in their ways until Harold Hill comes along. It's so much fun watching this performance and watching these characters slowly fall under the spell of Harold Hill's words, realize that they've been betrayed, and then again realize that even though they've been swindled, they've still changed for the better. They tell a great story, and they tell it about as perfectly as I've ever seen. So without question, this category gets a pass with distinction. Our next category looks at how the stage and screen productions create the authenticity of setting. Stage productions are unique in that you don't have to be 100% accurate with your setting. Some productions will still try to be, but other productions will use the power of suggestion to try to tell the story. Music Man leans more towards the former, trying to accurately portray the town of River City, Iowa, the people who live here, and, most especially, the band at the end. There aren't a lot of scenes outside of the musical numbers that really step outside of the realms of reality. And honestly, even a lot of the songs, especially the ones sung by the school board, are still within the realms of reality. When making a stage production into a screen production, one of the things that movie makers generally try to do is add more authenticity to the setting. They're better equipped to make you believe that you're actually there, either because the sets are more 
authentic and three-dimensional or because they're actually able to go to the location and shoot. And the Music Man really does make you feel like you're there. You really do believe that you're in a small Iowa town at the beginning of the 20th century. Moreover, the transformation of the town under the influence of Harold Hill is reflected as well. And you really get the sense of the scope of the transformation, especially when the huge band appears at the end. Now, I can't speak as to whether the sets or the costumes are historically accurate, because I don't really know anything about it, but in the end, that's not really what's important. What needs to be authentic more than the time period is the sort of small town, somewhat conservative atmosphere. And as someone who grew up in a series of small and somewhat conservative towns, I can say that they definitely portrayed that. Again, I don't see any fault with the portrayal of the setting, and so this gets another pass with distinction. Our third category looks at how the movie was put together with cinematography and editing. Another unique aspect of stage productions is that they're live. Anything that happens on stage, whether it's scripted or not, becomes a part of the story, and the fourth wall between the audience and the performer is a little more tenuous. In the movies, this aspect is eliminated with editing. If an actor goes up on a line, they just reshoot and edit here and there. In addition, a stage production is only viewed from one perspective, whereas with the movie, camera angles, cuts, and filters can be used to further the story. You can see a little of this in Music Man, particularly with regards to the musical numbers and the dances. The camera has the freedom to pan and zoom and really follow the dance numbers. Which is not to say that the cinematography and editing are perfect. There are one or two things that they throw in that don't really work, like when Harold Hill is wooing Marion and they throw in this kind of weird filter. It looks pretty cheesy and it never felt quite right to me. And it seems that in general they were trying to maintain the spirit of the stage musical so they don't always take advantage of the editing and make cuts where they should. And while I like the stage feel, there are points where it just doesn't work as well. In general though, there's nothing really wrong with the cinematography and editing and it's pretty effective in doing what it needs to do, so I give it a pass. And finally, we look at the transitionary nature of this adaptation and find out how well this production can be adapted and how well it was adapted. Not all productions transfer as smoothly from stage to screen as this one did. The Music Man has the advantage of being fairly movie-like already. It shoots for authenticity, the fourth wall is already pretty solid, and the choreography can be creative and energetic enough that it allows for several different camera angles. And in general, the movie aimed for being a pretty faithful adaptation of the stage musical with only a few changes made. One of the main ones being to replace one one of Marion's songs, My White Knight, with a song of much lesser quality called Being in Love. Why did they make this change? I honestly have no idea. Normally a change is made because the actor can't sing the original song, the original song could be considered offensive in some way, or because it simply doesn't work for a movie. Shirley Jones would have had no trouble singing My White Knight, the song isn't offensive at all, and it's pretty much just a simple and straightforward ballad. So the change in this version of the movie is something of a mystery. In fact, they kept that song in the 2003 remake, and it's actually one of the things I really like about it. It also undermines Marion's character a little bit, making her seem more desperate for love rather than someone who's just being patient and waiting for the right guy. That being said, though, the song isn't bad, just mediocre. It still uses the middle portion of My White Knight, and when it's done, you pretty much forget all about it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not that big a deal, and it certainly doesn't undermine the brilliance of the story. The story works incredibly well, both as a play and as a movie. I think they made the right choice in keeping it faithful to the stage version, and they definitely made the right choice in having Robert Preston play Harold Hill again. This movie is every bit as effective as any stage production, so I give it another pass with distinction. So with three passes with distinction and one pass, The Music Man gets an outstanding. Let us know what you think of the new series, and until next time, I'm the Scottish Reviewer. And I'm the Mad Hatter. Take care. People docking during the production. So rude. So rude. They go to this special house.